All right, so today I'll be going over uh, Java serialization attack. Uh, first, I'll start off with showing uh, why so serial, and then I will then proceed to uh, show how uh, Java gadgets actually work and how it can give you code execution. So with that, we'll start off with uh, the program, the vulnerable program that we will uh, run our payload against. So basically all it does is the, the real part here is it, it runs this read object, right? So it's reading a serialized object. So that's basically uh, what, what triggers uh, the vulnerability is, is this read object uh, on an untrusted uh, serialized object. So with that, let us me jump to another command prompt here and then I can show you why so serial. So uh, Java, actually it's my special JDK here. So Java jar, and I think it's why so serial, right? So if, if you just run it, it shows you all the different payloads. And what a payload is, it's a set of, of gadgets that will ultimately give you code execution. So uh, here I'm going to go with the very first original gadget, uh, commons collection number one. So that's the that's going to be the uh, gadget I'm going to use. So I'll copy that and then I'll go uh, there, run the payload. And so, after, so okay, so that's, that's the other thing I could kind of show you is, you know, how do you run why so serial, right? So it's why so serial, the payload, and then the command that you want executed. So, so that, that's how it works. So let's go back here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, JDK, uh, binary, Java, jar, uh, why so serial, uh, the payload. And then for us, let's go with creating the file pwned. Uh, um, text. So that's going to be our payload. We're going to pipe it to uh, payload. So we'll do that. And just to show you, uh, yeah, pwn does not, does not exist, right? I can uh, what's ls grep, uh, grep pwn, right? Nothing. Uh, okay, cool. Or actually, it's better if I can do this guy. Okay, cool. So that file does not exist. And so now I'm going to uh, run the vulnerable app, uh, run the vulnerable program with our, our payload file. So that's going to be JDK, binary, Java, class path, uh, the actual common collection jar. So that's the library that has the classes that we need for our commons collection gadget. And then the program itself, it's called uh, serialized test number two. And finally, the payload, right? So payload, so run that. I get some exceptions here, but that's normal for this particular example. But if I pwn this, right, it now exists. So we were able to get a uh, code execution, right? Using a uh, YSO serial. As, as a quick tangent though, uh, something I did want to show, uh, for, for those who are sort of curious here. So, so what's happening here, right? Is that when you run Java, you're running the JVM. So JVM is the virtual, virtual machine that runs your Java application. And in this case, for this vulnerability to work is that you need to have the common collection library available in, in your, your sort of running instance of your, your Java application. And I, I, was, I did that by specifying that uh, commons collection a jar file as a part of the class path. But if I, if I remove that, but first let's, let me remove pwn first, so make it clean, right? So this was my original execution, but if I remove that comments collection jar file, right? And I run this, uh, basically uh, I'm, I get more, more exceptions here, right? I get more. And the issue here is that the, the class that I needed in my gadget didn't exist because the comments collection library wasn't there. So, so that, what that, that was what was happened. And if I LS, right, I didn't get code execution. So that's a side tangent for people who sort of want to dig into it a little deeper. Uh, that, that's one, one of the, the necessities for this actual uh, exploit to work. So with that, I actually want to dive a little bit deeper in terms of how does uh, these Java gadgets actually work, right? So uh, the two websites I'm going to be referencing is this one by uh, uh, Synactic, 
sub, yeah, this website and uh, this blog post right here. So these are the two blog posts that I will be referencing. And uh, before I sort of jump into it, right, one of the comments I did want to mention is, you know, this is very, very common for, for pen tester and red teamers. So, you know, he writes, for a lot of people, uh, this, this tool is just a black box. So you run it, black magic happens, and then hopefully you'll get a shell. But when you don't get a shell, uh, because uh, a lot of these tools, they're so complicated and uh, most operators don't know what's happening behind the scenes. They just kind of just give up and it's like, hey, I, I, I don't know how it works. So, uh, you know, I guess I guess it doesn't work. But for us, you know, we're trying to dig a little bit deeper here and we're trying to understand how it works. So if we run into situations where things are just a little bit differently or there's pot pot uh, potentially ways of modifying your payload to get around the problem that you're running right, if you actually have an understanding of how it works, you'll, you'll have that possibility. So, okay, how does this, uh, how does this uh, gadget actually works, right? So uh, basically, okay, the best way to show it is here, let's jump back to my command console and I can show you what it's trying, what we're trying to do, right? So, so basically the vulnerability is that uh, the program is uh, reading a serialized object and because it uh, comes from the user, it can be completely uh, modified by the user, right? So what the user wants to do to get code execution is here, let me see if I can find the first file. I believe it's called barebone. Okay, so barebone, sure. Okay, so this is barebone. This is what we're trying to do with our sets of classes is we're trying to get uh, the, the, the read to read a runtime object and then uh, basically call the get runtime method for, for this uh, runtime class. And then from that, if that's gonna give you a runtiming object and with your runtiming object, you have this method called exec. And then with exec, you can run any type of commands you want. So ultimately, this is what we're trying to do here with, with, with our, our class, uh, with our uh, uh, class objects, right? And the reason that we're able to do this is because Java has this uh, mechanism called reflection. And so what reflection is, is that it allows a Java program to introspect other uh, Java classes and objects and get information from classes and then run, run the different uh, possible uh, methods uh, uh, based on, on those uh, class objects that you're able to in introspect uh, through through uh, this reflection mechanism. So that's what allows us to eventually get to this place where we're able to run uh, runtime, uh, get runtime exec. So this is ultimately what we're trying to do, right? And in this case, uh, for my class, I I'm going to create this first text file. So that's what we're trying to do here, right? And I believe I already have that compiled, right? But then just to show you, right, I don't have that. But then if I run my uh, uh, JDK bind Java, and I believe it's bare bone. So I run that, right? I, I get it. So basically that shows I have code execution by trying to do this right here, right? So, so this is what we're trying to do. So, but the thing is, is that, you know, from the vulnerable application, all we have is a read object, right? So how do we go about creating a, serial, uh, a serialization so we ultimately get all of this goodness, right? Oh, and one of the other things I really want to quickly uh, backtrack to show you what de deserialization looks like, right? So uh, previously, I created uh, this deserialized payload right here called payload. And for those interested, if I do a hex, uh, hex dump uh, dash C to payload, this is what a uh, serialized object looks like. And in our case, Right, it has all of the goodies of doing reflections with all of our different sets of classes to ultimately get code execution. So, just to give you an idea of uh, on the on the file system, what uh, our serialized payload looks like. Right. Okay. So uh, now the next step I wanted to show is the actual. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. So. The next part is like, I showed you what bare bone looked like. And so how do we get that, right? How, how do we go about calling a different, a, a bunch of different sets of uh, classes that will ultimately get us to this exec 
And in, in this particular class, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this file called Fufu. And to do that, we're gonna be using these uh, different sets of classes here, uh, transformer classes uh, mostly, and uh, with the arguments of first, right? The first thing it does right here is it gets this uh, runtime class. So first it gets that runtime class. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to get, we need to call this uh, get runtime method. But to be to order to uh, call that method, you actually have to get a handle to that method itself. And to do that, it calls this get method right here. So it calls a get method first uh, from this runtime, and then it finally gets that that uh, it finally gets a handle of that. And then once it gets a handle of that, then it could ultimately call this this exec. And uh, one of the other things I have to explain is transformers. So what are transformers? Uh, and I believe this website kind of has a really good descriptions of what transformers are here. So really quickly, what are transformers? So this is what a transformer is, right? So basically it takes an object and then uh, based on the argument of uh, what kind of method you want to call and the different parameters you want to uh, call with your method, it's going to give you this transform object, which is basically the return value of, of the method that, that you want to call here. So that's basically what a transformer does, right? Very handy. Uh, input, uh, stuff we want to call on our input, and then we, we get the output that we want. So, so that's what a transformer is. So let's ju just ju jump back here, right? So then, okay. There's all of that, and then uh, so this this is sort of the chain of all the different classes we want to call to ultimately call our exec, right? And then so uh, how does it trigger it, right? In this uh, payload only class, so basically you create a, a chain transformer based on all these different sets of uh, calls to these uh, different classes, and then you create this lazy map, and then uh, when you create this lazy map. Right, you add add your your set of transform classes there, and then also and then finally after your your lazy map, then you call this this uh then you call this uh get method, and so why do you do that? So quick explanation there. So we if we go back to this blog post, right, and so and this kind of really outlines what we're trying to do here. So what I'm explaining right now is I'm, I'm explaining this chain of events here, right. Uh, this this sort of uh, cascading sets of all these different uh, transformers, and then uh, what 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 triggers all that is this get method on the lazy map. And why do we why do we call that right? So let's go to the explanation here. So right here in in this part, it tells you what happens uh, with that get on the lazy map. So what happens there is when you call get there. Uh, what it does is it calls the transform, it calls the transform method for this factory object. And so, so basically what that does is it triggers off, it triggers off all of these transforms right here, right? That we've set in our uh, serialized objects. So that, that's what we're doing here by calling uh, get on, on the, the lazy map is to trigger off all of these uh, invocations here later down the chain. So with that, let's actually go to our, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, let's, let's, let's go ahead and just uh, run, run this, right? So I already compiled that, I believe, and it's called all. Yeah, it's this all, but I'll, I'll just, for the sake of uh, demonstration here, I'll compile it again, remove all.class, okay, um, JDK. Uh, bin Java C uh, class path uh, commons and here and all dot Java. Okay, cool, cool. That that worked, and I'm just looking at what the payload actually is, and I believe it creates the fufu file. But let me just verify. Oh no, it creates bar bar. Okay, it looks like it creates bar bar. So, but let me just yeah, I believe it creates bar bar. But let's. Do all that just to make sure it's not there. And finally, we could run it. Uh, JDK binary Java uh, class uh, class path uh, commons here, and also finally all right. We run it right. Some exceptions, but then we list bar bar. It's there, so we get code execution. So that was in a nutshell how gadgets work, right? 
where ultimately, and I think, and, and later here in this blog post, right, it, get, it gives you a really good explanation. So, right, ultimately, we're trying to get this exact uh, method call on, on runtime. But to do that, first, you have to get an instance uh, to your runtime itself. So, and that's, that's how you get uh, this instance. And then after you get the instance to the runtime, you have to uh, get the, uh, well, actually I think, yeah, uh, I, I, uh, I stand corrected. Basically you have to get a, the, an instance to the uh, a runtime object itself. And th that's what steps one, two, and three are doing. And then finally, when you get that instance, then you call exec on it, right? So th that's in a nutshell what the, the, this gadget is. Uh, the part that I didn't cover is uh, this part right here, right? These earlier parts where it's, you have, uh, in, in this common collection, one gadget, it uses this annotation invocation handler with a uh, proxy. And then uh, ultimately it does this first chain so that it can finally uh, uh, gets, uh, creates a lazy map and then calls a get on that lazy map. But excuse me. I'm going to save that, uh, you know, as an exercise for uh, the audience about how do you go with this first part. But, you know, what I did here was, was I explained this, this latter part. And with that, that concludes my demonstration. So, doo -doo -doo.